Let's talk about Shireen Abu Akhla. She was our colleague here at Al Jazeera, a Palestinian American journalist who was shot dead by Israeli forces while doing her job, according to journalists who were there. Huge crowds turned out for Shireen's funeral. An event that ended up highlighting what Shireen had been reporting on her whole career, the way Palestinians are routinely treated under Israel's occupation. Shireen's grave has now been sealed, but even after her death, she continued to tell the Palestinian story. So who was Shireen Abu Akhla? What do we know about how she was killed? And why is there so much anger about what's happened since she died? Shireen Abu Akhla was well-known and well-loved. She'd been a TV correspondent for Al Jazeera and Palestine since 1997. That's more than 20 years of Shireen's stories being broadcast into the living rooms of millions of people across the Arab world. She was born and raised in Jerusalem under occupation. She was telling the story that she was living every day. She was not just telling the story of the people. She was telling the story, the story of her life as well. And this is what made her magically an icon. She was there in every town, every Palestinian town, village, alleyway, refugee camp. She wanted to do the stories that nobody else wanted to do. And she uh, gave a voice to a lot of people who we otherwise wouldn't have heard from. We, we, we never assigned Shireen to do a story. I mean, she is just there. She, she, she shows up. And that's what she did on the last day of her life. At 6.13 a.m., Shireen emailed the Al Jazeera office in Ramallah, saying she was headed to the Janine refugee camp in the occupied West Bank to report on a raid by Israeli forces. There was a, a response from the newsroom saying that, Shireen, we are waiting for you to be live on the top of the hour. And suddenly, Right after that, 20 minutes after, after this email, um, we heard the news. Actually, we, we heard the news circulating on social media that Shireen was killed uh, on the ground. Shireen, Shireen, I'm Shireen! It's up! It's up! Shireen had been shot in the head while wearing a helmet and bulletproof vest clearly marked with the word press. There's video of the moments after as people tried to reach her and the shooting continued. The journalists who were with Shireen said the shots were fired by Israeli soldiers. One of them was Ali Al Samudi, also from Al Jazeera. He was shot in the back. Al Jazeera Media Network put out a statement saying that Shireen Abu Akhla was deliberately targeted by Israeli forces. We consider this something intentional because the bullet hit exactly um, the area under her ears where there is no cover. It was a targeted attack, it was a targeted assassination, we consider it that. The Israeli government immediately sowed doubt over who fired the bullet. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett came out with a statement saying, it appears likely that armed Palestinians who were firing indiscriminately at the time were responsible, and offered up a video of Palestinian gunmen in the area. But an Al Jazeera investigation examined the location of that video and concluded the gunshots fired in it were not connected to Shireen's death. The Israeli rights group Bet Salem also examined the video and came to the same conclusion. The investigative organization Bellingcat later published a more detailed analysis using other publicly available data. They worked out that Shireen was here, the Israeli army was here, and that Palestinian gunmen were also in the area, here. So that's a further distance. It's a much more obstructed line of sight 
to the spot where where this tragic uh, killing took place. Bellingcat's conclusion is that the available video evidence does not provide good grounds to doubt the accounts of the journalists on the scene. Indeed, it appears to support them. Although part of the frustration for Palestinians is the idea that the eyewitness accounts given by Palestinian journalists aren't enough, but there are double standards at play. The objectivity of Palestinian journalists is always questioned. We never question the objectivity of an American journalist or a Canadian journalist, or let's say right now, if there were a Ukrainian journalist who, were kill who was killed in the exact same way by a Russian, we wouldn't be rushing to use the passive voice or calling it clashes or somehow not laying blame at the foot of the Russian government. The Israeli government has now acknowledged that Shadin could have been killed by its own forces, and it's saying it's investigating. It's also suggested a joint investigation with the Palestinians, but they refused and said any Israeli involvement is just not credible. They are the criminals and the criminals cannot investigate themselves. Experience very clearly demonstrates that in the cases of such killings of Palestinians, the announcement of Israel's desire or intention to investigate does not lead to accountability. The investigation is an old trick. It's a strategy to uh, muddy the waters, to uh, obfuscate uh, by time. The Palestinians have launched their own investigation and say they plan to take their evidence to the International Criminal Court. The UN Security Council has also called for an immediate, thorough, transparent and impartial investigation. It was a rare case of unanimity. Notably, the council statement does not call for an international investigation. It's really quite vague uh, and leaves it up to the parties to decide in this case. It's making clear that the Security Council wants to get to the bottom of this, but there's disagreement among council members about how to do that. So it's really left to the parties to work it out. For Palestinians, not only did they lose a beloved journalist and member of their community, but on top of everything, they weren't allowed to mourn her in the way they wanted. The same day Shadeen was killed, Israeli police entered her family home, took down a Palestinian flag, and told mourners to turn off patriotic music. They took down another flag outside a church where Shadeen's family was receiving condolences. Shadeen was a Palestinian Christian. So this is what uh, Palestinians here will tell you, not even flag. I'm sorry. They don't even the allow you to have. I'm, the I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving slowly. Okay. And then there was what happened at the funeral. Israeli police said there was a plan made with Shireen's family to drive the coffin from the hospital to the church. Shireen's brother said there was no agreement. After people started to carry the coffin towards the hospital gates, this happened. Israeli police beat them back and threw stun grenades into the crowd. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh my God. Such disrespect for the dead and for those who are mourning the dead. Once the coffin was in the hearse, police continued trying to remove Palestinian flags. And at one point, they smashed the back window of the hearse to get to one. This level of violence is part and parcel of the occupation, the very nature of the occupation. It takes a lot of um, abuse and violence to keep the population of Palestine without rights and subjugated. Now on the issue of Palestinian flags, an Israeli court recently ruled that it's not a crime to display one. But there's also a law that allows Israeli police to remove them if they judge that their display could disturb the peace. And police frequently make that judgment. They want to show us that they are in control, that people cannot express their feelings, they cannot express their anger, they cannot carry a Palestinian flag, and they cannot uh, uh, be sad in the way that they want to be sad. So this is, the, this is the regime. Thousands of people crowded into Jerusalem's old city as Shireen's coffin made its way to the cemetery. It turned out to be one of the biggest gathering of Palestinian mourners in years.
While all of this is hurtful and shocking for so many Palestinians, it's also unsurprising. Palestinians see everything that's just happened as the latest injustice in a long pattern of violence under Israel's occupation of Palestinian land, an occupation that's illegal under international law and enforces a system of apartheid, according to Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, where Palestinians are treated like second-class citizens and where journalists are killed for trying to share the Palestinian struggle with the world. I'm not sure you know.